Hey, welcome back everybody to the channel. We got a, a new episode for you. We're going to talk a little bit about myself in regards to the fact that I have ADHD. So a little bit about it is that I was what we call a late diagnosis in regards to ADHD. I was in my 30s and it was one of those things where I was already practicing as a psychiatrist. I was doing a lot of intakes, um, evaluations for ADHD. And all of a sudden, I think I had a epiphany or a realization that like, this is my life, right? So a little bit of history about me, if you don't know already, that I was actually supposed to be a dentist. I initially went to dental school and I actually failed out because a lot of the things that showed up, a lot of the issues that happened were untreated ADHD. I'm coming from a background as a Pakistani Muslim American, my parents, especially my dad, was very much like, hey, you're lazy, you're stupid. A lot of things that we kind of hear with people who have ADHD, because I was having some troubles, you know, after my natural smarts kind of ran out. So I was actually able to get into dental school, but I failed because I couldn't schedule like study time. I couldn't organize my studying time. I thought I could just pull an all-nighter um, for tests and stuff, and that didn't work. Right, so obviously just the volume, just the amount of work, the amount of material was there was too much for me to deal with, for me to kind of do all night. So I failed out. When I was, you know, getting through school, getting through med school, then afterwards, you know, there's a lot of just kind of work. I was just focusing, I was reading, studying all the time, spending all my time in the library. Like, and I felt like I was doing so much time. And that's what it was. It was essentially, you know, I learned a certain way. This is the way that I worked. And that's how I made it to, made it through uh, medical school and became a psychiatrist. My scores weren't the greatest, but I was able to kind of communicate and have interaction with people. Fast forward a little bit, doing those evaluations, and then boom, that click happened. So I was able to get started, you know, do the evaluation. I was able to get started on Adderall. Um, and it was extremely helpful. It was one of those things where I say now, I joke and say that if I had this in my life when I was earlier, when I was younger, I would be a dentist right now instead of a psychiatrist, right? So I'm a Muslim, right? I'm a, I fast during Ramadan. And one of the issues that happens when we talk about Adderall is that, hey, you take it within 30 minutes to an hour, it's working, and then the last, you know, four to six-ish, maybe eight-ish hours, and then it wears off. For me, it would last about six-ish hours, and then it wears off. So for Muslims, when you're fasting, you don't take medication that you don't need, right? So it was one of those, Adderall is one of those things that I always kind of say, I don't necessarily need it right now. I won't die. Um, I will survive if I don't take it. But there was that gap then, right? Because you, when you're fasting, you know, between um, dawn and sunset, there is that time, there's a gap. So dawn fasting time was around five in the morning, right? Four something, 5.30 in the, you know, 4.45 to 5, 5.30 in the morning. And I don't have to go to work till like eight, nine o'clock. So what happens in that gap? How does that make that work? So I had to come up with something. And in the years past, Ramadan was always really hard for me because I didn't have caffeine. I didn't have Adderall. So I was struggling. I was you know, really unfocused. Um, it was getting to the point that I was almost like, is this potentially troublesome for my patients? Do I need to consider not fasting? So I thought about what I could do. And then I remembered some of the other medications that are out there. And I remembered that there is a medication, Vyvanse, right? Vyvanse is what we call like an extended, extended release um, version of Adderall, essentially. It's Lizdexamphetamine, it's what we call a pro-drug. You have to take it, ingest it, and then it becomes essentially Adderall in the body, amphetamines in the body. So I thought, why not, while I'm fasting for the month of Ramadan, start doing Vyvanse for that time? And what I saw was that it was extremely helpful, right? It did a couple of different things for me that was really great for me during Ramadan. Took a couple hours to kind of kick in. So I was able to kind of get a little nappy nap, get a little fresh before having to get up, take my kids to school, and then even myself get to work. And by the time I was doing that, I was like, I'm good. I feel great. I feel all right. I feel energetic. I could be out the door really fast. 
and we're getting to work on time, be productive for the morning, fantastic. And it would last for a long time, last about, you know, the full work day that I would need it to be. Um, it would also, you know, one of the other things also with it suppresses your appetite a bit. So I wasn't as hungry. So that hunger aspect um, during Ramadan was really kind of suppressed. The only issue was that what it does for me is increases my thirst. So I was, instead of being very hungry, I was very, very thirsty. So I had to manage that by in the morning time, drinking a whole lot of water. So let's talk a little bit about Adderall and a little bit about Vivant, some of the differences. Adderall is amphetamine, amphetamine salts, uh, dextroamphetamine is a mixture of these amphetamine salts that are there. The Adderall itself comes in a couple different versions. There's Adderall immediate release and then there's Adderall extended release. Um, the immediate release version is a tablet. It lasts about four to six-ish hours. Um, there's a generic version of it and it's very safe and effective. Extender release, XR, lasts up to 10 to 12 hours, usually about six to eight, eight to 10 ish hours in that range. Comes in a capsule form. There's a generic form of it, of it as well, so it's not super, super expensive. Um, there's potential for abuse with both of them. Vivance is what we call a pro drug. So again, it has to be ingested first. It becomes essentially the same amphetamines in the body. Um, it does have that slower absorption, you know, one to two hours for people lasts about 12 to 14, 10 to 14 ish hours. Um, there's a lower risk of abuse because it has to be ingested orally. The stomach acids are what dissolves the capsule to make it an activated form. The only issue though, however, there is no generic form until at least 2023. Um, so it can be extremely expensive. It can cost three to $400 a month, depending on insurance and coverage and everything like that. And the other thing, there's also now something called Mideus. Mideus is a newer medication and what I call as an extended, extended, extended release. So there's actually three beads that are released, an immediate release, extended release, and then a double extended release. This is advertised to last up to 14, 16 hours. So it's really good for people who have longer work days, right? Adults who have longer work days, kids, teens who have longer school days, maybe with sports or after school activities things like that, that they need to have that extended longer period of time that's there. So that's a little bit of a rundown between Adderall, Adderall IR, XR, Vivance, how it applies, and sometimes how you have to use it um, depending on your situation and, and what works best for you.